Hello, well today is a miserable old day so decided to make another video. This will either be one of my better ones or the worst video on YouTube. Taking a chance here that we'll have a go. I'm going to attempt to describe how to convert three phase motors to run on single phase power. Um, if you ask an expert, an electrician, or someone who really knows about these things, they'll tell you it can't be done and give you all sorts of technical reasons why. Um, but I've been using this method for many years and it works for me. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate with this linear machine. And here on the end we have four cables. The green and yellow one is earth and goes to the frame of the machine. And we're left with the three phases. But Mr. Electricity Supplier has only given us single phase, so we've got to do some conversions. We could replace the motor with a single uh, phase motor, but single phase motors, uh, size for size, aren't as powerful. And we're going to have problems in, in uh, mounting it and belt length and so forth. So there's no reason why we can't convert them. Um, You'll never get quite the same power as you did if it was using three phase. But in the workshop, the home workshop, that doesn't matter. Most three phase machines were, are designed to work in a hot, dusty, uh, continuous environment in a factory. And uh, we can't possibly hope to compete with this. But if we're just simply using a lathe to turn something down or a drill to drill a few holes, we can be quite happy that we're not going to use the full or maximum capacity of the machine. And we can get away with a little bit of imbalance within the, the windings. I'll explain this a little bit later. I'll keep this as simple as I possibly can and I'll use this uh, uh, little initia, which I'm doing for a friend, to describe the process. I've had a look on uh, YouTube, <coughs> pardon me, and uh, um, with respect to the people that have put videos up there, I'm not too impressed. Um, you'll get some guy showing you a motor, making a lot of noise, mumbling away, probably music, possibly adverts, and he hasn't shown you actually what he's done. Or well, the other side of the coin, you'll get some real smart ass who comes up with loads of theory, and I haven't got a clue what he's talking about, and at my time of life, I'm not going to learn anything new now, so... If there's anyone out there who thinks I'm speaking out my backside, well, you're probably right, but uh, don't bother to let me know. It's not aimed at you. This video is aimed at uh, somebody who is prepared to take responsibility for their own actions and simply wants a leg up in the right direction to go about the problem. So we'll make a start. OK, well we come to a, a little bit of theory I'm afraid, but I'll keep it simple. But you can't skip this or you won't, under, won't understand what's going on. Um, at the power station, and I'm doing this very simplistically, at the power station we have a generator. And that represents our generator. And um, it could be a coal-fired power station, gas, nuclear probably producing steam running turbines and it turns this generator. Now this generator inside has three coils. There's one, there's two, there's three. Make a drawings please. And in the center of the generator there's a rotor and on the rotor there's a big magnet and the rotor is turned round and round and round by the steam turbines and the magnet which has magnetic field or flux cuts through the coil as it's turned and induces into that coil AC current and voltage as it continues around the generator it does the same here voltage starts to climb and then de decline 
and it does the same through all the coils. The coils are 120 degrees apart, and equally spaced in other words, that's 360 degrees for a circle. In the UK this shaft has turned at about 50 times per second. Across the pond this shaft is turned at about 60 times per second. I'm representing this very simplistically, but please bear with me. So the voltage is coming out of these coils, and they're all behind one another. They are out of step. In other words, they are out of phase. This is one phase, second phase, three phase. Think of it as um, a light bulbs instead of coils. If we light this light bulb up, and then this one up a fraction later, and this one up a fraction later, and we repeat the process, we have what appears to us to be a rotating light source. So this generator is producing uh, a rotating magnetic force. It's not actually going round, it's actually a sequence of events that appears to go round. And these cables go out across the roads, across the fields, over the power lines, into your factory, into a motor in your factory. And the motor is exactly like the generator at the power station. It has three windings, and they're arranged within the frame of the motor. And in the motor we have an armature with a magnet, possibly. And um, the, the phases coming into the coils produces this rotational magnetic field that the magnet in the front tries to catch up to. It never actually catches up, and there's technical reasons for this, which I'm not going into with this explanation, but it never can catch up. So a motor can be a generator, a generator can be a motor. Okay, uh, let's just draw that again. I'm switched off, I will proceed. Um, there's two possibilities as to how your motor may be wired up. It may be wired up as the original generator in the power station, and this we call delta. Or it may have each of the three windings to a centre tap here, which is no known as the neutral, and it's, it just simply represents the same thing, but drawn a bit different. And this is called a star, because it looks like a star, I suppose. And I prefer to work with the star configuration rather than the delta configuration. You can run both, but they take different approaches. Each coil will have two ends, of course, so you'll have six wires coming out of every motor. But they don't all come out of the motor. Sometimes these connections are buried within the windings of the motor, in which case <laughs> you're in trouble. But uh, there's usually ways around most of these things, but you can usually convert them. If there's no way that you can change this delta to star, then this would have to be run either with uh, an auto transformer, various windings and tappings to produce the missing phases that we don't have, or you would have to use another motor, another three phase motor, spun up and run up, which then becomes a generator, which again produces our missing uh, phases, as we only have single phase power. But the third opportunity, which is the simplest, and I'm going to employ with this uh, little linishing machine, is the star configuration. You may find that motors already like this, but you still need to get at all six wires of the three coils. Okay. Right, well, assuming you haven't fell asleep, <laughs> we'll continue. Working on our star configuration, if we put single phase power across two of the windings, we'll have energised this coil, which is an inductor. And the voltage and current in this coil 
is slightly out of phase because of the inductance. The, the uh, current slowed down slightly. It's not sufficient as three phase um, proper. Well, it's a start. So what about this third uh, coil? How, we can, how can we bring this one into, um, into operation? Well, we can't do the same thing because it will end up being in sync or in phase with one of the other two. So the opposite of inductance is capacitance. So here we're going to bring out a capacitor. There's our capacitor. OK. As this is drawn, this motor will run. Um, it may not start by itself. Um, it may just sit there and buzz. But if it's given a good spin, it will continue to run. And the value of this capacitor, or condenser, call it what you will, wants to be about 20 microfarads per horsepower. That's, there's no hard and fast formulas here, it's experimentation. But something in that region will put you in, in, a, in a good start. But this capacitor will cause unequal currents to flow within these coils, and they will slowly heat up. If this capacitance is low, that won't be too high. But we need more capacitance to start the motor. If this was a higher value, such as 60 microfarads per horsepower, this motor would immediately start and run away. But the coils would overheat and the motor, in a few moments, would burn out. So what we want is a capacitor that has high capacity just for the first second of starting, and low capacity for actually running. Well, there's no such capacity capable of doing that. But what we can do, we can put a switch in here. This represents our switch. And we can put another capacitor in of a higher value. So that we hold this switch down, plug the motor into the mains. Within a second or two, the motor is shot up to, to speed, in which case we then let this switch open and the motor is now happily running on the smaller value capacitor. Now although we're dealing with single phase power, these capacitors must be rated at twice the single phase voltage because they see twice the voltage. So if we've got 220 volts here, that capacitor sees 440. So it wants to be rated higher than the single phase power we are using. The start capacitor ideally should be an oil field one in order to dissipate heat that is generated by unequal balance. But the smaller value can be something in the region of a, an electrolytic. A supply of these could be fluorescent fittings by the way. You can parallel or series them up to get the value you require. This does take a bit of experimentation and this only comes with experience, but it depends on the horsepower, revs, all sorts of factors. But this basic circuit is what I use 90% of the time, and it works for me absolutely fine. So there's a the theory. Thank you for staying with me. Let's go now into practice, but try and bear this circuit in your mind if you can. This simple switch, by the way, if we're going to get a bit more technical, it could be automatic, it could be run by relays, and there's various ways of doing this. But I said at the beginning, I will keep this simple. And uh, in an effort not to bore you to tears, we'll stick with this arrangement. So we go to the practical aspect of this circuit. Okay, if we're still there, we now come to the sort of practical bit. This is the switch of the little linishing machine. I've taken the, the bolts out to speed the uh, demonstration along. And this switches the machine off and on. So when we open it up, it looks quite complicated. But it isn't. Because of the switch, that represents these connections. And these are our three phases. And this switches to that. And that switches to that and that switches to that. So we can disregard those. It's merely putting the power through to the windings. And if we count our windings, we've got one, two, 
three, four, five, six of them. So we've got to all ends of all the windings, so we can convert this motor, no problems at all. Now if we look at this connection box here, if I open that up, you'll see that three of the windings are all shorted together by this connection strip here. Do you remember our circuit where three windings are all connected together? That's our neutral point. So I now know that this motor is wired star fashion. I need not alter any of this at all, but simply need to remove one of these, and it doesn't matter which, one of these wires, and between it and its connection, place our capacitor. And hey presto, we'll have this up and running. OK, one thing I forgot to mention, I apologise. If the motor goes in the wrong direction, if it goes clockwise and we want it anti-clockwise, or it goes anti-clockwise and we want it clockwise, with a three-phase motor, we on need only change to swap them over of the... Um, the windings. It doesn't matter which two of the three we swap. So long as we swap two, the motor will go in the opposite direction. So that should be sufficient information of, for you in order to get three-phase motors running. Be careful. Electricity not only electrocutes you, it burns as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.